Hi, this is Keith Schneider, CEO of MarketGage.com, and this is, wow, March 1st edition of Market Outlook. So let's take a look at uh, some of the key indices. We'll take a look at Russia and um, gold as well, maybe a little bit of oil, and see how things are setting up. Well, first of all, let's take a look at the daily chart on SPY, Spider, S&P 500. Um, as you can see, we actually um, corrected the last three days and it, touching the 10-day moving average. Overall, um, there was some good compression uh, for four or five days at the new highs. We moved up and really couldn't get any momentum. And you can see most of the volume for the week was light with the exception of Friday which saw a little bit greater than average volume on the down move, but nothing excessive. And again, you can see mostly we've had um, <clears throat> a move up on relatively light volume, uh, no uh, major distribution or what I would call major uh, accumulation or distribution days. The best day that we had in terms of volume was uh, <clears throat> in the last couple of weeks on the big move up that really convincingly broke out of the sideways range. So with the market taking out the 10-day moving average or closing on it, um, along with this sideways correction, obviously a uh, move back up after this short correction here could get some significant follow-through. There should be some really good support around the 20950 to 210 level, and the most important key level here is the low um, from last week, and that is around uh, 209.20 or so. Let's take a look. Excuse me. Uh, let's see. Get an exact price here. You know, it's just under um, 208.50 or so. It's definitely a critical. Uh, support level to hold. Uh, QQQs, take a look at that. They've really been on fire. And as you can see, even with this uh, short-term uh, compression here over the last five days, four, uh, excuse me, yeah, four or five days, um, basically you had uh, inside day on Friday. Um, I would be definitely looking to potentially lease it for short-term traders, follow it um, either way. Uh, on the um, on the upside, you can get some more substantial follow-through. On the downside, you do have the um, 108 level as some support. Uh, we'll take a look at that um, in more detail. And I would say. Again, the key component here is really the support level around 107 level. So you have another one and a half to two percent uh, move to the downside before um, a more serious correction might materialize. But this action right here above 107 is the critical support level. Shorter term, again, that 108 level uh, and the 10 day moving average would take out the last week and a half of work, also worth watching. So again, 108, nearest long-term support. A breakout above 109 would be a breakout of the sideways compression here uh, and the inside day that was put in on Friday. So let's look at take a look at the bonds. And again, bonds... Again, Longer term uptrend, clearly still intact. This 50 day is still rising pretty sharply, although what we would be uh, called is a weak distribution phase as we've closed under the 50 day moving average. So again, resumption, it's interesting, you sort of scissored between the 10 day um, and the last couple days worth of action, which comes in around 127. Uh, let's take a look here that 127.50 to 128 level is really critical. Just under that moving average is also a key opening 
and a high of the prior day. So you definitely want to look at that 128 as important support. And on top of that, uh, any movement above the 50-day moving average and the high from about three days ago. Okay, let's take a look at some of the um, uh, other markets here. Uh, let's take a look at, well, let's, let's take a look at some of the market internals. VXX, again, um, we had that cross, but the um, market failed at the uh, 200 and the 50-day moving average. So we're now into a distribution phase back under that 200. Um, so all of this work above the 50 and the 200, which look like you might be getting a change in trend in the overall markets, were negated. We're now trading um, back near the lows as the market's hitting new highs. And again, with some of the issues still lurking in Greece uh, with Russia, um, not surprising. We're still trading a little bit above the lows that were put in in December, even though we're trading higher than those prices. So it's telling you that a little bit more caution is seeping into the markets. Um, <clears throat> let's take a look at... Um, GLD, and again, uh, GLD, uh, gold, looked really good earlier this year. Um, actually, for the year, we're up marginally. We we're up quite a bit. This big sell-off as the markets, uh, the equity markets uh, improved, and the crisis in Greece and Ukraine are basically abating. Not surprised to see that the tension uh, has basically put pressure on gold. So to see this thing resume, we really want to see it fill this gap here and take out that 50-day moving average, which lies at 118. Other than that, we are definitely still in a negative phase here. This is a bearish phase, bearish overall market phase. Now, interestingly enough, trading a little bit differently is the gold miners. As you can see, the gold stocks um, basically in a recovery phase. Uh, we sort of like this trade here. Um, it's doing much better than the underlying gold itself. Um, it sort of got washed out on a ratio basis. And actually for the year is up pretty good. It started out the year trading around 18 or so, just a little bit above it. We're up around... Um, 21. So that's a pretty good size move uh, for um, the markets uh, for this GDX. And again, in this recovery phase, if we negate this rising 50-day moving average, we'll be out. But overall, uh, this is interesting that uh, gold miners is firming up before the gold bullion or in advance of it. Um, so we covered, um, let's go into Russia, RSX. Now, with all that uh, we were talking about in terms of the um, uh, political situation there, the, the murder of uh, or assassination of an uh, opposition leader, uh, it'll be interesting to see how the markets react. Um, it's unclear whether the protest or the march um, had numbers greater than what was expected and what the markets are going to think. But again, um, overall, uh, you're in this recovery phase in Russia. It's done um, uh, quite a bit better uh, since the massive sell-off um, <clears throat> uh, where it culminated uh, in the middle of December. So actually, the Russian markets... Uh, in spite of uh, that assassination, um, still is holding up. When I looked um, after the market closed to see if there was any uh, unusual activity, there was none. So it'll be interesting to see how the markets react here. I would definitely be looking at a potential move uh, above the recent highs, which is about 1825 as a positive sign. Uh, overall, though, you have this sort of... Uh, flagging action here, uh, bear flag action. So um, <clears throat> although we're in this what I would call slightly positive recovery phase, 
as you can see that 50 day moving average starting to turn up slightly um, I would be a little bit uh, um, <clears throat> more cautious here considering um, what's going on but again you got to trade the price action so again a move uh, beneath this flagging action under the 10 day could precipitate certainly a test of a trend line let's put that in trend line is down to the uh, 1550 to uh, 16 level uh, maybe even a little bit lower uh, but I would also expect some support around that 50-day moving average, which comes in around 16 or uh, 1585 level. So that should offer some decent support as well. On the other hand, um, if the markets react positively to the news, which would certainly be surprising, um, a move above the 1825 could certainly get you a test up to the 2160 level as well. Um, Let's see what else we have. Well, let's take a look at oil, which is sort of stagnating um, at these levels. And again, uh, you're definitely in a bearish phase here. Um, market is hugging and staying below that 50-day moving average. Above the 19 level, you're going to take out about a week and a half's worth of work, the 10-day and the 50-day, and that might portend a bot more bottoming action um, and a potential rally in uh, oil. So this is US, uh, USO, which is um, basically uh, US uh, oil prices. All right, well, that's it for now. I hope this helps. Again, uh, just sort of took a look at that global macro picture here. Um, so we have a pretty good idea about the rates. Oh, one last thing I would like to cover is UUP. And as you can see, UUP, um, lots of sideways action. But overall, closing on the highs for years. So UUP, extremely powerful. Can't say anything more except that that trend just seems to persist and increase. Um, and you've got some nice consolidation. Looking at that weekly chart, you can see we're consolidating at a high level, which is a good sign. Uh, next levels of resistance are quite a bit higher. Um, around that 20, 26 level, um, the ATR here is um, about um, four cents or so, so not very much. Uh, no, excuse me, that's uh, yeah, excuse me, that's um, just a couple of ticks. Um, so the ATR, I uh, just want to check here. Yeah, ATR, daily ATR of UUP is 13 cents. So we're trading 25.20 or so, um, and we looked at the, um, the upside objective here. Uh, the recent highs on the weekly chart correspond going back to 2010, somewhere around 25.75 uh, to 80. So you're looking at a good um, four or five ATRs more uh, to the upside uh, if this thing persists. All right, that's it for now. Uh, hope this helps. See you next week. Don't forget to sign up for this free at www.marketgauge.com.